Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 14th of May. We will analyze the operation of the armed forces of the Russian Federation and its allies to open an additional front line along the Seversky Donetsk river near Belogorovka in this video. First let me show you where Belogorovka is located. This is the Belogorovka. On the west from Belogurovka, Severodonetsk, on the east we can find Slavyansk, Kramatorsk and Liman area, on the south we can find Papasne, so this is Belogurovka. And today we will discuss the operation along this river. This is the river. It's the front line between the Russian Federation and its allies and the Ukrainian forces. On the 2nd and on the 3rd of May, the Russians, they crossed the Seversky Donetsk river in this area. They established their first pontoon bridge and the Russians established control over the town Shepilovka. They captured this town. In this town there were just a small territory defense. These guys wasn't professional and these guys was easily defeated by the Russians. And the forces from Shepilovka, the Ukrainian force from, from Shepilovka, retreated towards Privilia. As you can see, there's just one road, and that's why they couldn't retreat towards, for example, Birogorovka or Novodruzhsk. There is just one road, so that's why the guys from Shepilovka, they retreated towards Privilia. Maybe somewhere here in this area, some of the forces turned to the, in, towards Novodruzhsk, I don't know. But the Russians on the 2nd and the 3rd of May, they established control over this town. They defeated the Ukrainian forces there. And after that, they start, they split their forces into a few small groups. Uh, commanders groups, sabotage groups, maybe scouts groups. And after that, they started scout the territory uh, around this Shepilovka. The Russian forces moved towards Privilia. The Russian forces moved towards Novodruzhsk. And the Russian forces, they moved towards Bilogorovka. Uh, according to the Russian sources, they were just a half of the BTG. It wasn't com completely full BTG, just a half. And according to the Russian sources, there were no heavy armor or heavy equipment. Just the commanders, scouts, sabotage groups, and so on. But as far as I understand, because of that fact that there were very heavy clashes in the town Rubizhnoe, as you see, it's on the northeast from town Shepilovka. There was a very big and powerful battalion, Ukraine battalion, in the town Privilia Novodruzhsk. So there was a very powerful fortified area, Ukrainian. There were big army of Ukrainian army in this area. So that's why, as soon as some for some forces, territory defense that retreated from Shepilovka towards Privilia, they reported and announced to these forces that. Uh, the breaking through penetration operation appeared in Shepilovka. The Ukrainian forces immediately moved their forces from Pivili and Novodrusk towards Shepilovka. And on the 4th of May, the Russians they lost their bridgehead in this area. So, from the period from the 2nd of the 1st May, there was the first attempt to cross the river to establish the bridgehead, and the Russians were defeated with the Ukrainian forces that located in Privilia and Novodruzhsk. So we can mark it uh, like this. The only important thing that the Russians managed to achieve during this operation is that meanwhile the Ukrainian forces from Privilia and Novodruzhsk moved towards Shepilovka and as far as I understand there were a lot of Ukrainian forces around this city. They were trying to push Russians from their land towards the another side of the Severetsky Donetsk river so we can say that the Ukrainians they were they were they feel all these fields roads and these hills meanwhile the Russians started their artillery attack and according to the locals to the local telegram publics to the local ch telegram channels they said that all these fields all these roads all these rocks all these hills were full of dead bodies of Ukrainian soldiers. It was hell. It was artillery hell in this area. So we can say that the Russians, they crossed the river. They they forced Ukrainians to attack them. They forced Ukrainians to leave their sieges again. And after that, 
the Russian artillery ruined everything in this area and there were a lot of dead Ukrainians around the Shipilovka. The Russians couldn't establish their bridgehead near Shipilovka, so that's why they did another attempt near town Serebrianka. This is Shipilovka and this is Serebrianka. They crossed the river Seversky Donetsk in this area and in this area. And they were trying to establish their bridgehead somewhere here. They tried to capture Serebrianka, Grigorievka. They tried to establish bridge, bridgehead on the north from the town Siversk. But there was a very powerful battalion in Siversk and the, force, the Ukrainian forces from the town Siversk moved towards this position and they destroyed the Russians in this area and they pushed them back on the other side of Siversk Donetsk River. So we can say that this attempt also failed and Ukrainians and one more time they pushed Russians back. Now I will show you a small photo like four pictures that describes all these days. This is the picture. So on the 2nd, 3rd May, the Russians crossed the river and tried to establish control over Shepilovka. This is their actions. They established their, their pontoon bridge. They moved Belogorovka, Novodruzhsk, Privolia. After that, uh, they lost their bridgehead on the 4th of May. On, at night from 4th till 5th of May there was a very heavy artillery attack and I told you that a lot of Ukrainians died during this attack. On the 5th of May they tried to establish another um, pantoon bridge near Serebrianka but they were attacked from Seversk and the Ukrainian forces from Seversk they destroyed the Russian group in this army. So this is a short story about the first period, about the first stage of this operation from the 2nd of May till the 5th of May. On the 6th of May, the Russians started their artillery bombing of this area. They bombed everything from Serebrianka till Privilia. So all this area was under the Russian artillery bombing, under very heavy Russian artillery bombing. During the 7th and 8th of May, the Russians did the third attempt to cross the river Seversky Donetsk and to establish their bridgehead near the town Bilogorovka. So now we are talking about the Bilogorovka. And the Russians, they crossed the river in this area. They established their pontoon bridge here. And they established their bridgehead over this territory. They took something like this. They took this bag, also they took these hills from both sides and they took Bilogorovka, they took the suburbs of the town Bilogorovka. All this was done during the 7th and 8th of May. By the time the Russians get the Bilogorovka, the suburbs of Bilogorovka, they found out that the Ukrainians, they built their fortified area among the civilian buildings. So their, their fortified area wasn't on the top of Bilogorka, it was among the buildings. Also the Ukrainian forces, they controlled this landfill, this landfill and this landfill. That was a very nice position for their eyes and to correct their artillery. So if we take a look at this map, we can say that the Russians established control over this back and over these hills, this hill and this hill. And they established control over a few houses on the north of Bilogorovka, this one. But Ukrainians, they controlled this town, these hills, and they saw perfectly what's going on on the north. And they established control over this hill. So they knew everything that happened in Bilogorovka, in this area. During the 8th of May, the Russians start to move in towards this bridgehead, their heavy vehicles, heavy tanks heavy armored vehicles and so on. Ukrainians, of course, they, they spotted this pontoon bridge and they started their artillery attack. And on the 8th of May, they managed to destroy this pontoon bridge. So we can say that this pontoon bridge was destroyed. But as I told you, the Russians, they managed during the 8th of May, they managed to cross the river, not just with the troops and with the soldiers, but with the heavy equipment and the Russians they moved this heavy equipment 
towards Bilogorovka and some forces were moved towards Shipilovka. And during the 8th of May, the Russians managed to establish control over the town Shipilovka. The, for the Ukrainian forces that were located in Shipilovka, they were retreated towards Privilia one more time. Meanwhile, the forces from Seversk moved towards Bilogorovka. Ukrainian forces from Seversk moved towards Bilogorovka. So for now we had like one tactical battalion group Russian with a few dozens of equipment, heavy equipment. There wasn't a lot there weren't a lot of tanks or armored vehicles, just a few dozens, maybe one, maybe ten. Not much, not much. And of course it's not enough to uh, have their very successful clashes, very successful battle. So of course the Russians they needed reinforcement. They managed to push Ukrainians towards Previlia. They managed to establish control over Shepilovka, over the north of Belagorovka, but it wasn't enough. And as I told you, on the 8th of May, the Ukrainian forces destroyed the pontoon bridge in this area. On the 9th of May, the Russians, they have re recovered their pontoon bridge in this area, and they start moving their heavy armor and heavy vehicles towards this back. And exactly on the 9th of May, you saw a lot of pictures. It wasn't on the 9th of May, we saw this later, on the 11th of May, as far as I remember. But we saw a lot of pictures from the internet about the forces that were located in this forest. Uh, the Russians, they tried to hide their forces in this forest. And a lot of military Russian authorities, they asked themselves why the Russians, as soon as they crossed the river, they didn't move their tanks, their heavy equipment towards the front line. I will give you my opinion about this, but a little bit later. From the 9th till the 10th of May, the Russian, the Ukrainians, they sent their, their drones and they spotted all these vehicles, all these tanks. And after that, we saw a lot of pictures in internet of these forces. Now we will discuss all these pictures. As you can see, this is the, our place. This is the Seversky Danius River. This is the territory on the north. This is the territory of the Russian Federation. And on the south, this is the territory of this back. And these yellow things, they show us the Russian forces. You see how many troops, at least on this picture. And there were a lot of, this is the same picture, but from the another side. You see these two bridges. This is it, these two bridges. They're here as well. A lot of Russian forces trying to cross this river. Now this is the forces somewhere in the forest. Another, a lot of forces, many forces. Another forces on the same side of the river. More fo it's the same forces that we see on the beach. You see these forces. Some of them, we see that they are destroyed. Some of them, I can't say that they were destroyed. Another picture somewhere in the forest near this building. We can, we can find this building. As I understand, this is somewhere here or somewhere here. And another picture of the vehicles that Russian tried to hide in this forest. And as soon as we saw this picture, the West sources, they started to say that all these vehicles were destroyed. That all these vehicles were damaged or destroyed. And they started to say that Ukrainians, they deal uh, great success by covering this area with artillery. And by the way, a lot of Russian forces say the same. They saw the same pictures. They saw that all these vehicles were spotted. And they start to repeat after the West sources that the Russians were defeated in this area heavily. According to the Russian military authorities, on the 9th of May, this pontoon bridge was restored. And the Russians moved towards this bridgehead around 100 pieces of equipment. Uh, the main idea of this plan was to enforce the forces on the north of Bilohorovka and enforce the forces that located in Shipilovka. But on the 10th of May, at night on the 10th of May, the Ukrainian they spotted these vehicles hiding in the forest and started to bomb this territory heavily. And most of the equipments 
most of vehicles that look were located in this bag was destroyed or the Russian sources they're adding one important word not everything were destroyed but some of them were destroyed and some of them were left on the battlefield you understand the difference because if equipment is destroyed that's mean that you can't use it anymore and if equipment were just left for example these tanks were left there because we know that the Russians, they established their front line here on the south and the Ukrainians, they didn't, they didn't have possibility to move their forces here, their troops there. So we can say that if the equipment were left, that means that as soon as the Russians suppressed the artillery, Ukrainian, they made to turn back on this bridgehead and return these vehicles. And this is very important. So now, now let's repeat the second stage of this operation. On the 7th and the 8th of May, the Russians, they faced very powerful attack from Ukrainians on this side they attacked the Russians in this area on the 8th of May the Russians they built their pontoon bridge and by the end of May this pontoon bridge was destroyed but the Russians managed to cross some vehicles there on the 9th of May the Russians they built another pontoon bridge and they start to move their forces there they moved around hundreds of vehicles and equipments on this towards this bridgehead on the 9th and 10th of may the russians the ukrainians they spotted these uh, vehicles hiding in the forest and they bombed this area and the west sources they're saying that all these vehicles were destroyed and the russian sources did that some of them were destroyed and some of them were left on the battlefield we can say that as a result of those heavy losses, of these very heavy losses, the Russians, they did establish the bridgehead in this area. They are very weak there. They don't have reinforcement. They lost a lot of forces in this, in this, during the, those battles. And the next thing that the Russians did, they moved their forces from Bilogorovka, from Shepilia, towards Privolia. And they started their storm operation over the Privolian. This is a very nice place. This place between Rubizhnoya and from Rubizhnoya the Russians established some fire control over this area. So we can send that there is a nice support from Rubizhnoya. So the Russians they moved towards Privilia. And now they're storming this town with the e equipment that left from this crossing. We can take a look at this map. You see this uh, this. Uh, arrow shows the Russians attacked from their bridgehead near Bilogorov and Shpilvilkov towards the Privolia. And as a result of this operation, Russian sources, they say that they were destroyed more than 50 pieces of the vehicles and equipment, including two engineering groups with the pontoon bridges. The Russian forces had very big losses on the bridgehead near the Bilogorovka. But the most important thing that the Russians are still there on this side of the Seversky Donetsk River and that the battle for Bilogorovka, Shipilovka and Privolia is still running. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel and enjoy your evening. Bye bye.